Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors. This is part two of the Heathkit AJ12 Tube FM Stereo Tuner rebuild. And uh, last time we were talking about putting in individual filter capacitors on a terminal strip to replace the cans. And I put them in, touched up some of the solder around there, turned it on last night, and all I got was low distorted sound on a one channel. I'm thinking, okay, what happened? But uh, these things do happen. Sometimes you have setbacks when you're rebuilding. And I looked at some of the solder on this one on the other side. I'm just going to spin it around here so you can see. We don't want this to fall over. You could lose a limb. It's so heavy. This one here is kind of half point to point and then two boards. What I noticed about the boards is very little solder on the individual lands. So I started at one end, went right through, re-soldered every connection. Took about 25 minutes. Now, I've been doing this for 40 years, so that's why it doesn't take me too long. But um, just a standard 25 watt uh, circuit test solder iron with a fine point. What I find with these is they were very economical the way they were soldered. So on some of the joints, they're only half filled with solder. So what I noticed was about six potential bad connections. And just the working on this board here, just flexing the thing around. It has been touched for years. Some of those connections went bad. So I re-soldered everything, flipped it back on, running it through my trusty KA2000 here, vintage headphones. It perked right up, got sound out of both channels kind of very poor stereo separation so that takes us really to what we're going to be talking about today and that's alignment now i'm sitting here at my dining room table in our condo apartment and uh, i used to have when i was in the stereo business years ago had a bench it was about 25 feet long Two guys did all the warranty work on Kenwood and Luxman and Alpine and Yamaha and uh, any of the older stuff that people brought in. We had signal generators and scopes, service manuals, all kinds of different test equipment, uh, stereo signal generators, um, all kinds of stuff. It was rarely ever turned on. We also had, uh, you know, very very act for you know bringing things slowly up to power hardly ever used um, you know the whole idea of reforming capacitors with a very act is actually ridiculous when these things are dried out they're dried out you can't put moisture back into them you need new capacitors so if you turn it on and you happen to blow something it's a weak component anyway that's my argument as far as alignment goes I just got some new alignment tools um, just through Amazon, and I'm not advertising Amazon, but these were $9.99. And they're actually really nice anti-static plastic tools, all sizes. Um, this one here is the one that's actually my favorite. This was in the bottom of a Zenith Round D TV set that I was working on in the 80s. Some have been working on it and just left it there and then sent the TV set to um, for students to work on. You don't need any of that. If you are getting some sound and a station, you don't need any of the alignment stuff. You can align it just as well as if you had a signal generator scope, all that stuff. Now there happens to be um, a manual for this one. A lot of them are online now. And basically it just tells you which uh, towers here, which, which uh, IF cans do what. This is basically the FM board. This is the multiplex board. And as you know, that can be done on one IC now. Um, basically, the procedure is this can, this can, this can. There's one underneath. And then dot, 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 like that. And turn it maybe half a turn off center. That's why there's a red line on here. Each way, find the best adjustment and try it at the bottom of the dial, at the top of the dial. I got this thing, it has beautiful stereo separation, 
a lot more sensitive. The tuning eye closes on the strong stations. And I'll just show you the tuning eye here for a second. It has one of these really nice green tuning eyes. It's basically like a miniature CRT ray tube. Um, that's one of the reasons I always like this tuner. And then it has a neon stereo tuner indicator, which is kind of neat. Really neat thing about the Heath kits. You can actually adjust the stereo phase, so it's a fine tune on the 19 kilohertz oscillator. You pull it out, I don't have speakers here, you pull it out and you get kind of a strange wah 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 motorboating sound. And it's the 19 kilohertz being against the 38, and you basically tune it until it stops beating. So if you go one way, it goes bip, 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 in the center, punch it in, perfect stereo. And uh, I would manage to go through this one and tweak in about 25 minutes. One thing you got to remember on these cans, when you stick the tool in and just light force doesn't move the slug, you're done with it. Because if you force in the slug cracks, you can't really do anything with it. And trying to find a new, um, you know, new coils and new variable capacitors on these units is very difficult. So just be gentle on them. Don't spray anything into them. Work in sequence, can to can, listen. Your ears, and I'm not kidding you, we used to have contests on this. One guy would take an Alpine tuner or a Lux tuner, set it up to factory specs on the bench with the scope, the frequency count, everything. Another guy would go through it and tweak it by ear. And then we'd run it in the showroom. Couldn't tell the difference. But uh, there's hope for us yet. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening.